Daniel 11, 32, shall we read? And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Anytime you, you, you move against the word in an inordinate sense, then a spirit of demonic corruption seizes your mind. But the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, go out there and find me some folk that know God. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The text is loaded with implications and indictments. Number one, uh, Number one, the latter clause is strong in its expression. If you're weak all the time, it's because you don't know God. <laughs> and if you're not doing exploits, extraordinary, extraordinary, if your life is not ex extraordinary, an extraordinary life, then you don't know your God. So I want to talk to today and during this season, eight power sources of the kingdom and I'll give you those in advance just in case you you miss some weeks you can always recapture the tapes number one I'll start at the end uh, number eight is wisdom and knowledge is a power source number seven is character and honor number six is faith number five is praise and worship number four is fasting number three is prayer Number two is holiness. And today I want to talk about the first power source, children. Children. C-H-I-L-D-R-E, children. Jesus speaks concerning the new birth. 99% of his teaching was concerning the gospel of the kingdom. 100% of his demonstration, it was a viable, authenticating manifestation of the extraordinary power and potential of persons that operate from the system that that is called the kingdom of God. Now he tells Nicodemus that the reason I'm able to do these things is because and anybody that's going to see what I'm doing and understand what I'm doing and have access to the power that produces these doings, there has to be a birth into this new system. You don't learn, you don't do this by reading books on miracles. You don't do this by eight years of seminary. You have to be born of this power into this kingdom. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that, that God is looking for children. He wants children. Now, Leo said it very succinctly this morning that, that we're in the image, born in the image, created in the image, and after the likeness of God. So, we ought to have Godistic Manifestations. You know, little Daryl looks like Big Daryl. Big Daryl has a, a, a prophetic musical gene as a minstrel. Now, little Daryl is getting ready to major in music at the University of, of, of Alabama State. So now, the DNA of the son comes from the DNA of the father. So then in a Godistic sense, the fatherhood of God ought to be the prototypical, come on now, expectancy of our sonship. What am I saying? I'm saying that like father, whoo, like son. So here's the deal. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, 127, verse number 3, that that children 
are a heritage of the Lord. We've got a generation now that's being tricked, you know. They, you know, they're too cute. They're too fine. They don't want to lose their figure. You know, uh, young men, you know, they, 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 don't, they, they don't have time to have babies. I'm, I'm too busy being, you know, hip in the know. Not knowing I'm too busy working two jobs trying to get wealth. Not knowing that the greatest wealth you will ever have are your children. Not your Mercedes and your Lexus and your Cadillac and your Lincoln and certainly not your Ford. Children are a heritage of the Lord. And the Bible says that children are the fruit of the womb. Now, a womb is a tree. And the fruit that comes off the womb tree is a fruit called kids. Look not there. Stacey's fruit. Leo's fruit. Sharia's fruit. Sharella's expensive fruit. <laughs> She's about to bankrupt the farmer. <laughs> now, he says, now, not only are children the fushiki lahalau, the fruit of the womb, but the word says that children are his reward. Your reward for getting married are children. Now just take out a pamp and wipe your tears away, but that's your reward. But you see, we are so secular in our value system Come on now. And so ethnocentric, in other words, we're centered on our own selfishness that we think it's all about us. When you get married, let me say something to you preaching women. When that baby comes out of your womb and that first cry, that first cry de declares your call. Well, I'm a prophet. Well, you prophet mama now. And so you just get on the nursery and, and, and pop, prophesy to them pampers and that Johnson blessed all. And you have to see that baby as a reward. I heard a very shocking story from, from one of the members a couple of weeks ago as she was going through a call that hadn't seen her. And she said that uh, my niece had a baby that was 10 months old in New Orleans and that the baby's daddy beat the baby to death because the baby was doing what babies do, cry. A cry is nothing, come on now, but a baby who doesn't know how to talk saying that I'm uncomfortable. So now he destroys the reward that God has granted. Not only is it the reward, the Bible says that children are arrows in the hand of a mighty man. In other words, when kids come out of your womb, you've got to see them as weapons that you will launch futuristically into generations yet unborn to time. He has experienced massive turmoil with banks failing, corporations going bankrupt, and job losses reaching record highs. Many have wondered, didn't anyone see this coming? Now discover how God saw it coming and revealed it to the Apostle John in the book of Revelation in Bishop Leo Lewis' book, Voodoo Economics, being released from the cosmic control of economic sorcery. So deception, you know, flows throughout the whole system. Learn why the church must become the secretary of intercession for our nation's economy. How you can activate the blessings of Abraham to find protection from the current economic woes and more when you receive Bishop Leo Lewis' book, Voodoo Economics. <laughs>